Welcome back, Phasmophobia fam. I hope you're having a wonderful day. In today's video, I'm going to go over every single ghost in the game and tell you what you need to know when you're playing Nightmare Mode about the differences between the ghosts and how you can test for them and what really makes them different in the quickest and most simple way possible. I'm just going to go through real quick, give you the rundown, so hope you find that interesting. Um, if you're a beginner player, if you're new to Phasmophobia, I've set up this entire YouTube channel just for you. So I've made beginner's guides covering everything a level one player needs to know and, you know, as simple as possible, super easy to understand. Also, make sure you join up with the community. I'm on Discord, I'm on Twitch. The links for both those are in the description of this video. We have level one players. We also have level 6,000 players like myself are super friendly and welcoming. We would love to see you. We'd love to have you over there. And, um, yeah, so click the link. Come on over and say hello. We look forward to meeting you. Hopefully we see you soon. Now here's the video. Enjoy. Okay, so here we are. Here's the ghost book. We have all the ghost types. Now, on nightmare mode, you only get two of the three evidences. So a lot of the times you're deciding which ghost is based on attributes that aren't evidence and are specific to each ghost. So the spirit. The spirit is known for what's called the spirit test. And you do that. It's very simple to do. Basically, you have to make sure, first of all, that you know what room it's definitely in at that point. So check with the thermometer. Make sure that you know which room is the ghost room. And you smudge it. You smudge the ghost room. Now, every ghost in the game, except for two, will be barred from hunting for 90 seconds. And the two that aren't are the spirit. That's going to be three minutes. And the demon, which is going to be 60 seconds. So, you smudge the ghost room. And if the ghost hunts... Uh, in under three minutes after you smudge that ghost room then you know it's definitely not a spirit and if it takes over three minutes it probably is a spirit so there you go now the wraith the wraith is super simple the wraith likes to teleport around a lot so if you get one of those ghosts that's giving you a lot of ghost events outside the ghost room uh you should probably suspect wraith as being an option but the simplest easiest way to tell is put down some salt wait for it to step in the salt after it steps in the salt, wait for it to walk a couple seconds after, and while it's walking, if you have a UV light and you're scanning the floor and you can't find any green footprints, the Wraith is the only ghost in the game that will not give you footprints. Super easy to understand. The Wraiths are super scary, though. With their teleportation, they're wild. So if you get a Wraith, good luck. All right, Phantom. Phantoms are also super easy to tell once you've been through a lot of hunts in the game because there's a few things the Phantoms do that are unique. Uh, the first thing is probably the least talked about. They actually have an ability to walk from the ghost room uh, towards a player and do a ghost event, much like a Wraith teleporting or, or some other ghost. So they do also do that. So if you get a ghost that's giving you ghost events outside of the ghost room, maybe immediately suspect Phantom as well as Wraith or Banshee. Um, but the Phantom, two simple ways to, to figure out if you're dealing with a Phantom. Uh, number one, you take a picture during a ghost event and the Phantom disappears. Okay, and the ghost event continues, so you have to make sure you keep hearing the music from the ghost event, and uh, the ghost has disappeared. That's a phantom. Phantoms do that. Phantoms also never appear in ghost photos. But uh, the other big thing is during hunts, every ghost will flicker in and out of visibility during a hunt. The phantom stays invisible for longer, and it's super sketchy. They can cover a lot of ground while they're invisible and get closer than you think if you're trying to wait for a smudge. So yeah, uh, if you're used to the normal cadence of flickering in and out of visibility during a hunt for a ghost... Uh, the phantom will definitely look unique to you now poltergeist poltergeist uh, Like to throw stuff. They're super aggressive But the thing that the poltergeist can do that no other ghost can do is it throws multiple objects at the same time So you can make what's called a pulti pile and see if the poltergeist yeets multiple things be careful though Because if you're in a room with a lot of throwable objects and the poltergeist is throwing them left and right all around You lose like 2% sanity per each thing thrown when you're close to it So that can add up quickly if it's yeeting stuff left and right so keep that in mind. Now the Banshee. The Banshee is going to be interesting because uh, it, it targets one player at a time. And um, while it's targeting that player, it, it basically decides to hunt based off that player's sanity. So if you have a squad, it's definitely easier to tell. It's super easy to tell if you have a Banshee with a squad because it's always going to be targeting one player. And even though the devs had said that the Banshee will hunt like normal... If uh, the target that is already selected leaves the house, that's actually not the case. The Banshee will just select a new target. And then if the Banshee selects a new target while the original target's outside of the house and kills that new target, and then the old target comes back in, the Banshee's still going to select a new target from there on out. So we don't need to get that complicated with it. Basically, if you're dealing with a Banshee and you're not the target, it will walk right through you and it won't kill you during a hunt. So interesting to know. Now, if you're playing solo... What you can try to do, which can be kind of tedious, is take the parabolic mic in and listen for the Banshee's iconic scream. It's super awesome. It sounds like... Rah! Not that loud, but you know what I mean? Like, it's it's super... It's not like the little whispers you get, like... 
It's it's like a loud freaking like it's awesome. You got to hear it when you hear it. It's super cool for the first time. Now the gin, the gin is one of our fast ghosts. So uh, under certain circumstances, the gin is going to be super fast. Now what you have to take into context here is that the breaker must be on. If the breaker's on, uh, the gin is going to be a super fast, but only if it's far enough away from you. When it gets within a few meters of you, it slows down. So if you have a gin basically with the breaker on, uh, spawn in for the hunt in like Tanglewood and you're really close with the smudge, it may not look fast. So you have to get some distance from it to see if it starts coming from like a, you know, maybe get to the back of the hallway. So they can be tricky that way. So make sure you evaluate them that way. Um, so that's for Nightmare Mid. On, on the other um, uh, difficulties, you can go for a, uh, like, like a sanity test. Jin has a hidden ability where anyone within a few meters of it can just randomly lose 25% sanity. Uh, when it does that, you'll get a phantom EMF2, just basically an EMF2 with no interactions. So the Jin does that. Um, but for Nightmare, you're basically going off speed and, and toying with the breaker. So if you get a fast ghost, a lot of times it comes down between like a Jin and a Hantu and a couple other options. So if you're wondering if it is the Jin, maybe turn off the breaker and see if it slows down. But make sure you have your distance with the Jin because it's very easy to mistake it for a normal speed ghost if it's too close when the hunt starts. Now, a mare. A mare. What you need to know about mares, they are early hunters. Uh, when they're in a dark room and they're late hunters very close to a shade when they're in the light So they hunt at 60% sanity in the dark 40% in the light They're also most likely to give you the light breaking ghost event where they appear and then shatter all the freaking uh Lights in the room and then the, the switch is inactive I've noticed personally with mares uh, when you turn the lights on they like to move around a lot just my experience So uh, if you get a ghost that's kind of acting like that it could be a mare now a revenant a revenant used to be the scariest ghost in the game because it's the fastest but the Revenant is actually super easy to deal with once you understand it, and it's super easy to identify because, A, it'll be super fast uh, when it sees you. So when, when a ghost is hunting, there's the um, wandering phase where the ghost is kind of aimlessly wandering looking for something to kill, and there's the chasing phase. The chasing phase is when it sees something and it's chasing it. It sees a player. Now, when the Rev is wandering, it's like the slowest ghost in the game. So if you're hiding in a closet and you hear footsteps that are very far apart and slow, it's like... Like that pace, it's a rev. It's a rev. Because it's just, it's wandering, it's slow. But then uh, if you were to come out of that closet and it sees you, it's going to zoom. So, yeah, th that's a rev for you. Shades. Shades are the most boring ghosts in the game. And uh, every time I play Prison Nightmare Solo, I get a shade. It's awful. They wait until they're down to 35% sanity to hunt. And they're super inactive, super hard to find a lot of the times. Although every now and then you can get an active shade. But if you get a ghost that's just taking forever to hunt and you're standing in the ghost room, and it's still not hunting and you've been in the match for a while try to step out of the ghost room and see if it hunts after a few seconds if that's the case it's probably a shade because the shade doesn't like to hunt while you're in the ghost room so keep that in mind so shades boring uh also pretty easy to detect most people after a few hours in the game uh can kind of figure out if it's a shade just because you know it's not like other ghosts in that way now the demon the demon is super interesting so a lot of things to note with the demon here the demon is going to hunt the most out of any ghost in the game it actually technically starts to hunt at 70% sanity, but it has an ability to hunt at any sanity percentage regardless. And when it does this special ability, I actually have a video of me on the high school where it killed me doing this. When the demon initiates that special ability to hunt at any sanity, it actually, just like a phantom, it walks from the ghost room towards the player for a maximum of like 20 seconds. As long as you're close enough, it'll walk up to you and then initiate that hunt right next to you. So this means that can happen at any point in the match too. That's not necessarily exclusively an above 70% sanity thing, but you can walk in to the map and literally the demon could just start walking up to you first thing and just initiate a hunt and kill you. It's, it's, uh, it doesn't use it that often, but it does that. But other ways to test for demon. Uh, the cooldown times. The demon has the lowest cooldown. So if you start getting averages of like 20 seconds between the end of the one hunt and the beginning of the next one, that's typically a demon. Uh, but the the other test we actually did today that's pretty cool is the demon, like we were talking about with the, with the spirit, has an alternate reaction to the smudge in the ghost room. Where if you smudge the ghost room, and you have to make sure that it is the ghost room that you're doing this during a time where you're basically within the sanity range of being hunted regularly. So you smudge the ghost room, the demon can actually start its next hunt within 60 seconds instead of the normal 90 seconds. So you want to wait until a hunt has ended, give it maybe 15 or 20 seconds to get that cooldown worn off, and then smudge it. And then if you have a, maybe you have a crucifix in there or not, you know, you want to you time it. If it's around 60 seconds to the next hunt, probably a demon, a good way to test. Woo. Now, a Yuri 
Yuri has a hidden ability much like the Jin, but instead of 25% sanity lost, uh, it can randomly take 15% sanity from people around it. But when it does this, it's not a ghost event. It's just, I think it's technically an interaction, but what it does is it slams a door super fast and super hard, and there's generally like a delayed audio to it. So if you get a door slam from all the way open to all the way closed, like really fast, immediately think Yuri. If you're not on nightmare mode, and you're on professional, you can actually go check to see if you dipped 15% sanity right there. It took a whole jump. So that, that's interesting for Yuri. Now, Oni. Onis are one of those things where, um, they're one of those ghosts where, uh, you kind of have an idea, but it's hard to really confirm for sure. So, um, it's easier to confirm that it's not an Oni than necessarily that it is. So, Onis basically are limited in the way they cannot do the, uh, mist ball that comes at you and hisses. That ghost event in particular. So, if you see that ball of mist come at you, and then it does a, <sighs> that kind of, like, you know, you, you've known it, you've probably seen it a bunch of times. That can't be an Oni. Now, what an Oni can do is any other ghost event that ends in a hiss like that. So, you know, if you get that ball of mist that comes at you, and it hisses, that it's certainly not an Oni. But what you don't know is if you haven't had that event yet, that it definitely is. So, it's kind of like context in, you know, with everything else going on. So, uh, a lot of these times you get down to those three or four ghosts on Nightmare Mode, and you kind of have to narrow one down here, narrow one down here, and then make an educated guess. So, uh, that's, that's what you take into consideration with the Oni. Onis are also super active as well. So, if you get a lot of ghost events, if you've gotten four or five ghost events in a, in a short amount of time, and uh, you haven't gotten that, that misting hiss ball of death, then you can start to think Oni for sure. Now, Yokai, this is the dumbest ghost in the game and nobody likes it. Just kidding. I actually love the Yokai, but the reason it's dumb is because it won't. Well, so let's just get started. The Yokai actually uh, will hunt you at up to 80% sanity. It's technically uh, with on paper. Uh, without a special ability being used, the earliest hunter in the game, but there's caveats. So the caveat's gonna be, you have to be talking within two meters of the yokai for it to use that ability, to hunt within 80% uh, sanity. So, you can test it that way. If you get a super early hunt, you can try and take some pills and just uh, chill away from the ghost room or maybe stop talking and see if it takes much longer to hunt the next time. Also, a way you can test with the yokai, which is a little bit more risky, is uh, keep your flashlight on during a hump. Just make sure the ghost doesn't have line of sight on you. Make sure you're behind a door or something. Um, the yokai won't be able to detect that flashlight if it can't see you um, unless it's within two meters of you. So uh, it's generally like 10 meters where your flashlight will start to distort. So that's when most ghosts will be able to detect the flashlight and come get you and kill you. So if you have a ghost that's within that flickering range of your flashlight and your flashlight's on, and it doesn't come into the room and mark you, it definitely could be a yokai. That's a good way to test it, but keep in mind, uh, there is a chance that a yokai doesn't necessarily track that flashlight outside of two meters, it just happens to come in that ghost room. So just because the ghost comes into the room doesn't necessarily mean um, that it isn't a yokai. So keep that in mind. Context is key. But yeah, so you can uh, kind of mess around with it that way if you're brave enough. Just make sure you have a smudge. That's what I would recommend. Now a hantu. A hantu is going to be a ghost that's guaranteed to give us freezing evidence on nightmare so if you have your two evidences on nightmare and one of them isn't freezing rule out hantu right away because hantu is guaranteed to give you freezing okay now in the freezing it's almost as fast as a rev a rev is like three meters per second um when it's tracking someone a hantu i think is like 2.7 uh when it's freezing now a hantu gradually slows down as it gets warmer so uh you can actually loop a hantu in you know 65 degrees fahrenheit plus like temperatures i actually have a video where i set up a whole raceway in grafton because the ghost room was upstairs in the uh like the um the storage room or whatever that was where it was freezing but i led the the uh, hantu downstairs in grafton and just looped it because it was so slow around the whole house so if you have a ghost that's acting that's like coming at you really slow uh check the temperature um if you have a ghost that's acting really fast in the cold could be a hantu but also just like a gin if the breaker's off um, and the ghost is really fast, turn the breaker on and go to a, a warm room, take a temperature, and see if the, the fast ghost slows down in the warm, because a lot of times it comes down between Hantu and Jin with these tests. So you can kind of figure it out that way. Now next, Goryo. Goryo is guaranteed to give you dots on Nightmare Mode. So if you're on Nightmare Mode and you have two evidences and one of them isn't dots, roll out Goryo. Also, the Goryo test is super simple, um, if you're as long as you're doing it correctly. So... Basically, Goryos are guaranteed to give you dots on Nightmare, but you're only going to see those dots through a video camera. So, if you see dots in person, eliminate Goryo every single time. Uh, the Goryo test, what you want to do 
is make sure, and this can be really tough depending on the room. You want to make sure that you're not in the room, but you can see the dots from the next room. So you want to have your handheld video camera and look at the dots in person and have it lined up so that you can see if you get dots on the camera, see if you can see it in person real quick as well. But the reason you don't want to be in the same room as the dot dots projector when you're doing this is because um, basically the, the Gorio gets really inactive, especially with dots when you're in the ghost room. It's almost impossible to get dots from a Gorio while you're in the same room as the dots projector. So you have to set it up so you can see it and then move out of the room and kind of like post up with your cam and look that way. So Gorio is super simple. Now Myling, Mylings are quiet. And the way to test for them, a lot of times you'll suspect it because uh, you'll have a hard time hearing the ghost during a hunt. But the way it really works is for a test within that 10 meters uh, where they would distort the flashlight, that's the only point you're going to be able to hear uh, footsteps. That's the only distance. So you can set up a flashlight and then have the ghost come at you during a hunt and you shouldn't really hear footsteps until it gets to the point where that flashlight starts to flicker. Then the footstep audio should kick in. So that's a good way to test for miling. Also, they're more active on the parabolic mic, so you'll get more whispers than normal. Although, any ghost can whisper in there, so you could be burned on that one. Uh, just if you're going back and forth between a few ghosts, you're not sure about the audio, and you're on like a small house, because that miling test is really, really tough on like a Tanglewood or a Willow, because it's so condensed. It's easier on the bigger maps. Take the parabolic in there and see if you get a few whispers in a short amount of time. And guess miling. Still could be wrong, though. There's always that chance. Now, in Onryo, Onryos are interesting. They're early hunters. Um, Onryos, uh, you just do a candle test with them. So, Onryos have a chance to blow out the candle. They have like a 50-50 chance when they blow out a candle to initiate a hunt at any sanity. Okay, any sanity. But the way you want to test for an Onryo is uh, with how the candles work. If you have multiple candles in, the, in the, the ghost room and there's one lit, it's afraid of fire so it won't hunt. So, the Onryo... If it tries to hunt um, near a candle, potentially, it could use the candle as a, the candle could block it like a crucifix, basically. The candle will blow out. Uh, as opposed to if the, can, if the Onryo actually blows the candle. This is my understanding of it. If the Onryo actually blows the candle out, there's a 50% chance it starts a hunt. So there's a different mechanic there. That's my best understanding of how it works. Yeah, so, the, so the, like the, the range of a candle is a little bit bigger than a crucifix. So you got a 4 meter radius for a candle and a three meter for a crucifix, so that makes sense. But to test for the Onryo, what I would recommend is make sure you're within hunting sanity, uh, make sure you're getting chain hunted, and then what you wanna do is put down a couple crucifixes on the floor, put down all the candles, and just make sure you keep lighting them. And Onryo, first of all, is gonna blow them out at a much faster rate, but uh, you'll know if you get a crucifix to burn up when you still have candles lit in the room that it's definitely not an Onryo, if that makes sense. But yeah, if it attempts a hunt, if it attempts a hunt, um, it could do it from the next room over. So I've had it where you set up a bunch of candles and it just moves rooms real quick. So you gotta kinda stay on it. And as with everything in Phasmophobia, take context into consideration uh, and just, you know, you, use your head, just pay attention. Now the twins, the twins are tricky. Um, you gotta listen for double interactions. The way the twins work is one twin stays in the ghost room. That's gonna give you the cold temperatures. It'll be able to trip motion sensors, give you all the evidence. The other twin, twin B, is the roamer. That's gonna roam all the way through the map and give you interactions at a separate point. It can give you EMF5, but it won't cool the area down. It won't trip a motion sensor. And the big distinction here, if you suspect twins, is get a couple smudges, watch them during the hunt. Uh, twin A is gonna be 10% slower than average. Uh, twin B is gonna be 10% faster than average. So they, they're different speeds. And you might get twin A sometimes or twin B sometimes during the hunts. Now, a Raiju? A Raiju is interesting because there's a few interesting things about it. Basically, it's super fast when it's around electronic equipment. It also has a 65% sanity hunting when it's around electronic equipment, so it's it's fast, and it's an early hunter around electronics, and it also distorts electronics from 20 meters instead of 10, so it's more dangerous in that regard. So it's actually got an expanded range to use that ability. So if your electronics are being distorted from super far away, it could be an Onryo. If it's fast, could be an Onryo. Early hunter could be an Onryo. I mean, why am I saying Onryo? Raiju, what the hell? I just had a stroke. I just literally had a stroke. I'm trying to do this way too fast. Yes, could be a Raiju in any of those situations with electronics. 20 meters, uh, fast, early hunter. Uh, yeah, it's the best way to test, really. It's just to see if it's fast based on other options. And if it's distorting your electronics from a greater distance. Could be Raiju. And yes, I do smell burnt toast, chat. Thank you. All right, Obake. Obake is guaranteed to give us fingerprints. 
on nightmare mode. So if you have two evidences and fingerprints aren't one of them, it's not Nobake ruled out, ruled out immediately. Uh, you have like a one sixth chance to get a six finger fingerprint that only Obake can give you, or a two finger light switch print, or some special prints on the prison. Um, so keep that in mind. But some of the more subtle things, subtle ways to identify Obakes are there's a uh, like a 20, I think it's like a 25% chance when an Obake touches something that it doesn't leave a fingerprint. So if you have a fingerprint ghost and you see it touch a door and it didn't leave a fingerprint this time, only the Obake does that. So that's, that's a sign for the Obake, a good way to test it. The other thing is the Obake has a small chance to, um, get rid of the fingerprints quicker. So if you pay attention to when the fingerprint happened, fingerprints for all ghosts should stay on doors, windows, everything for two minutes. If it goes away faster than that, that's something only the Obake does. It's rare, it doesn't happen to every fingerprint, but it's something that the uh, more observant people will notice and it'll pay off on Nightmare Mode. Good way to test. Now the Mimic, the Mimic is the easiest of all these because on Nightmare Mode you will get three pieces of evidence because you will always have the fake orbs. And on every other mode you'll get the fourth evidence, always the fake orbs. So uh, if you have anything that could potentially lead to a Mimic, make sure that you rule out the third evidence or check if you have it on Nightmare or the fourth on regular. So there you go, Mimic is by far the easiest to find on Nightmare Mode. And uh, the Mimic can act like base. The Mimic can act like any ghost, and I believe it can switch ghosts from hunt to hunt. So yeah, there we go. I hope you found that useful. I may have missed a couple things in here. If I missed anything, uh, put it in the comments. If you have any questions, put it in the comments. I hope this uh, helped, and uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.